Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, today I'm going to talk about net ionic equations. Now this is the next step in the um, double replacement reactions that we talked about. Uh, so if you have not watched the double replacement video, I strongly urge you to go back and take a look at that one because what we're going to look at here is the next step in those double replacement reactions. Now in those in that video lesson I talked about, and if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, and I mentioned that the word double replacement or the term double replacement is very misleading uh, from the particle perspective, but from the equation writing perspective, it's it's okay because when you look at the equation, it appears that the ions are replacing each other and creating two, you know, a double replacement scenario. But it's very misleading from the particle level. So if we're looking at the actual particles that are interacting, there really isn't a double swap that's going on. There isn't two ions that are switching place. It's really just two ions that come in contact with each other to make an insoluble solid substance that goes on. So what the net ionic equations are, they're a way to try to uh, account for that, to try to fix that situation. So uh, what that's going to do is it's going to remove certain ions from the solution. So we want to focus on when we're dealing with net ionic equations, the ions that are actually taking part in the double replacement reaction. Okay, so there's going to be two kinds of ions. One, the ion that's taking place in the formation of the solid, and then the other ions, which are those spectator ions that don't take part in the overall reaction. So if we take a closer look at the overall step that's going, or the reaction that's happening, we've got the silver nitrate solution here, you've got your sodium chloride solution, you mix all the ions together, and remember when we're looking at this, what's happening is that those ions of silver and chloride are binding together and they're creating this solid when they come together and make these you know this this insoluble substance it's whenever these two ions come in contact with each other they bond together and they stay together and they don't float around the solution anymore and you get a buildup of solid that's forming here at the bottom and that's what we call the precipitate that's formed so what's going on is that these ions up here the sodium and the nitrates aren't really doing anything so in reality what's happening is that a silver ion is going to react when silver ion is aqueous with a chloride ion okay now this is not elemental chlorine this is a chloride ion because remember look at we have a ionic compound here so we got these ions floating around and what it will do is it will form the silver chloride solid and that is my net ionic equation it just focuses on those ions that are taking part in the reaction. Sorry about that, that says net ionic. Um, so this is my net ionic equation that I'm writing right here, okay? It gets rid of the ions like nitrate and sodium and sodium and nitrate because they're not doing anything. If you look at the reaction, they're really not doing anything. They're just sitting there watching, hence why they're called spectator ions. So we distill this down or shorten the equation into what's called the net ionic. And this is a more important equation because it gets rid of that whole idea of the double replacement thing that's going on. It just shows that when these two ions come in contact, they make this insoluble solid substance that precipitates out of the reaction. Now keep in mind, you have to have the charges here because this is silver ions and chloride ions. If you just write silver and you react it with chlorine, well chlorine should be a gas. Silver is a solid metal and silver does not dissolve in water. If you have any silver jewelry, you know that, that the silver metal will not dissolve. But I don't have silver metal and I don't have chlorine gas. I have silver ions. And remember, the ion is very different from the elemental state with, when it being in the, you know, the metal state where it has already lost the electron. It's already transferred the electron to the nitrate. Okay, so keep that in mind that this is a net ionic equation, so you need to have ions in your equation. Okay, all right, let's take a look at another one just to make sure we're all, all okay on this. So we have here is lithium nitrate, I'm sorry, lithium hydroxide mixed with iron 2 nitrate. So in this case, notice I have two nitrates for every iron, two nitrates for every iron, and one hydroxide and one lithium for each uh, of the ions. So when I look at this reaction, again, if I mix them all together, I've got these all combined together, it's going to be the iron and the hydroxides that come together to form the, the, the solid. Let me fix that. So it's going to have two of these coming together to bond and to make the overall solid iron two hydroxide. So what we can do here is we can focus on just the formation of the iron two hydroxide because again the lithium and the nitrate are spectator ions they're not doing anything in this overall reaction so the nitrate doesn't do anything the lithium doesn't do anything 
These just drop out, and since they're not doing anything, we really don't care about them being in our overall equation. So really, it's iron, two plus ions, which are aqueous, and they are reacting with hydroxide, okay, which is aqueous, and I would write my iron, two hydroxide on this side, because remember it's iron two because there's a positive two charge, and I balance that out, so I need to put over here a two for my hydroxide. So iron two hydroxide, this would be the net ionic equation for this particular reaction. So the net ionic equation gets rid of those ions that aren't doing anything and are not going to be, you know, in the overall reaction. Most of the time these are going to be the ones that follow those solubility rules. Nitrates don't, you know, are always soluble. Alkali metals are always soluble. They tend to be the ones that focus, you know, in the in the dropping out part. Anyway, so that would be your general double replacement reaction and focusing on that solid formation. Okay, one last one, and this goes for the acid-base reactions. Okay, so again, just like we had for the precipitate reactions, we can do the same thing for the net ionic equation uh, for the formation of water. Okay, so in this case, we have hydroxide and potassium, hydrogens and chlorides, and I mix them all together. And again, it's going to be those hydrogens that bond with the hydroxide, hydrogens that bond with the hydroxide to make the overall equation. I did not really balance this one picture-wise, so don't worry about the fact that there's extra hydroxides. We'll get into that idea a little bit later, but for right now, just focus on the fact that those are coming together. They make the water molecule. So in this reaction, the net ionic equation that's really going on, that's really happening here, is that the hydrogen ions are coming together with the hydroxide ions to make HOH, which would be liquid water. If you want to rate H2O, you can, but notice it's one hydrogen ion, one hydroxide ion. I probably want to put AQ here and AQ here to show that these are ions and they're aqueous and they're dissolving. So the hydrogen to the hydroxide to the water. If you notice this, the water is going to be formed from the hydroxides and the hydrogen ions coming together. So therefore, for this chapter only, you guys are always going to have water formations that are always going to be hydrogens, ions, and hydroxide ions coming together to make the water. And again, that would be your net ionic. And again, our spectator ions would be the potassium, chloride, potassium and chloride drop out, focusing on just the formation of liquid water. All right, there you go. That's uh, net ionic equations, and um, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.